Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Minish and welcome to another episode of Into Indie. Today we'll be reviewing Rus. This is a 2D god game made by Dutch developers Abbey Games. Fun little fact, Rus is the Dutch word for giant and that's what this game is all about. It's about four giants that you can control. And so let's get started with this review, but because there's no story we'll just be skipping straight to the gameplay part. Starting a new game, the first thing you'll see is a completely uninhabitable planet. It's a dry barren wasteland without any resource whatsoever. It's your job to enrich your planet with plants, minerals and animal life, and you do this through your giants. In total you have four giants, each with their unique abilities. You've got the ocean giant, the rock giant, the swamp giant and the forest giant. They each have an ability to create life, for example create a plant, create some herbs, create animals, and all of these things have certain resources related to them. Now let's say you create some blueberries. Those are food. Now these blueberries may gain bonuses depending on what they're next to. So if they're next to animals for example, they might give a bonus to the animals or the animals might give a bonus to the blueberries. Now your giants can also upgrade existing resources. For example, they could transform those blueberries into strawberries which are better but have a different special ability so they may get different bonuses. The things you can create also depend on the different biomes that are in the game. You've got deserts, oceans, forests and swamps. Now each resource also changes for every biome. So what is a strawberry in one biome might be a cactus in another biome. And again all these different resources have different bonuses. So it's a case of placing them in the most optimal way. You might even say it is, is a bit of a puzzle game in that aspect. Now of course these resources aren't just for show, they have a purpose, they're there to support humanity. Because once you've created a biome and added some resources, a human settlement might appear. Now again these settlements, like the resources, depend on the biome they're built in. Desert villages will focus on wealth, swamp villages will focus on science and forest villages will focus on food. But humanity differs from the rest of the things you'll find on the planet since you can't control them directly. You can shape their world, but not their will. Provide for them and they may thrive. Give them too much and their greed may get the upper hand. You do of course have some influence, but you can't control them directly. For example, if you give them the right resources, they might start a certain project, like for example a school. They might need a certain amount of food to complete that project and it's your job to give them that amount of food. But be careful, because give them too much and they might start getting greedy. And greedy villages aren't nice to other villages, they actually attack them, they try to destroy them. And then here you have a choice again. Do you allow that village to attack other villages or do you intervene? Now it's still in your best interest though to help these villages develop. And this is mainly because at the start of the game not every ability for your giants is unlocked. They only unlock by adding ambassadors and you get ambassadors from villages by completing projects, like that school I mentioned before. All in all the game might look pretty simple but believe me it isn't. If you actually get started yourself you might even think wow is this all there is to this game but it's a lot deeper than you might expect at first glance. That being said you might wonder what the actual goal is of this game. When do you win this game? Well actually when you start a new game you have to determine how long you want that game to last. At the start you can only select half an hour. Then you get a half an hour to build your civilizations. Once that half hour is up, the game checks to see if you've met certain challenges. For example, you've got a city with 200 wealth. This gets you an achievement and you might get something new, like a new mineral you can create. Complete more of these challenges and you'll keep getting better resources. However, this is all there is to the game. There's no goal besides getting all the achievements. And this is kind of a letdown. You have to do the same thing over and over and over again, except with things that have slightly higher numbers attached to it, so it kinda gets old really fast. The game is also pretty slow, so don't expect an action-packed, adrenaline-filled experience. The graphics in the Rus are kinda simple, but to be honest we can't complain all that much about it. Let's not forget this is an indie game and it does look like they did put some effort in it, unlike tons of other games that just feature some pixel art that's poorly made. However, they advertise their game on their website as having an interesting art style and a strong soundtrack. That might be a bit too much PR speak for me. 
Now, I already mentioned that the goal of this game is to complete certain challenges within a certain time frame. However, there's another feature in this game that does not force you to play with time. It's called free play and you can play for as long as you want. However, you can't unlock any new plants, animals or minerals. Speaking of which, there's over a hundred different resources in this game. Seeing as how you need to complete challenges to unlock each and every one of them, you're going to have to spend a lot of time if you want to complete this game a full 100%. In conclusion, Rus at first sight seems like a very simple game, but it really isn't. There's a lot of depth to it. At the same time though, where are the goals in this game? I personally am not a fan of achievements and a whole game based around completing certain challenges which are basically achievements doesn't feel quite right to me. And doing the same thing over and over and over again, even though the resources and bonus differ a bit, isn't really all that interesting. On the other hand, it's really nice to see how the villages develop depending on what you put down, what resources they have. And it's also fun to see them go to war against each other. All in all, Rus really is my cup of tea. However, I can see what people like in it and why they would like playing it. That being said, if you liked what you saw and you want to test this game out for yourself, you can find it on several platforms including Steam. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to check out my channel for more.